If I had to learn only one, which programming language would I learn for cybersecurity? Great question. And even if you're not a programmer by trade, learning the basics and learning the right language can really open your cybersecurity career options. Now, I've created a 60-second data visualization of the last 20 years of most popular programming languages I think makes the answer crystal clear. Have a look and let me know your thoughts in the comments. Watch the race to see which language wins and stick around to the end of the video for three great learning resources to help you skill up. Java's at the top of the chart right out of the gate. It's general purpose, class-based, object-oriented, and it's been popular for most of its existence going back to the mid-90s. In 2006, we see R start to move up the chart. R is the choice of many statisticians, people focused on data visualization, data science, machine learning. And in 2008, we see Python overtake Perl in popularity as a general admin scripting language. And then gaining further in the 2010s as a popular choice for big data, data analytics, data science, and machine learning itself. 2013 to 2015, we see Objective-C and Swift moving up the chart. Languages of the Apple ecosystem, OS X, iOS, Apple Watches, Apple TV. And in 2015, we see Python make a move again as it grows in popularity for cybersecurity from malware analysis to ethical hacking and penetration testing. And as of late 2018, Python overtakes Java as the world's most popular programming language, bringing Java's very long reign to an end. And I think the fact that Python is multi-purpose and user-friendly are driving forces that made it popular in the first place. Now, I did kind of step on the track in the middle of the race, so I'm going to let you take a minute and watch the race unfold in silence with a little mood music. And if you stick around to the end of the video, I'm going to show you three great resources for learning Python. Now we're going to take a look at three great resources for learning Python, two of which are absolutely free, all of which include source code to give you examples to work from. If you're brand new to Python, I suggest you begin with Microsoft's Python for Beginners. It's around 40 mini lessons of three to seven minutes each. They each cover a specific programmatic concept. So if you're new to programming, this is going to be fantastic. If you're new to Python, it's going to be useful. And you'll find that for each of these lessons, you can get the source code, a code snippet, from the GitHub repository that accompanies the training. And they have the Python for Beginners source out there, so you'll find a code snippet for each of the lessons that you're working through. Now, when you're in that GitHub repo, take a look at the other folders because there are some more sophisticated examples. In more Python for beginners, you'll find some project-based resources. And in the even more Python, you'll find a Jupyter Notebooks folder, which has some source. Jupyter Notebooks are very commonly used in the world of cybersecurity, something you want to get familiar with down the road for sure. Second on my list is Python for Beginners, which comes from the Cyber Mentor. So the Cyber Mentor has hundreds of thousands of subscribers, and this is going to be a bit more targeted, very hands-on, about three hours long. You're going to see that it's all code. So if you're brand new to programming, I don't recommend you start here. You really need to get some concepts under your belt, so start with that Python for beginners, one step at a time. If you're already familiar with the basics, if you have some Python exposure, Python for beginners is going to give you uh, some good hands-on focus as well, just another lens. And Number three is the Python Crash Course, the number one selling book on Python programming, over a million copies sold, about 10 or 11 chapters on concepts, and then nine chapters dedicated 
to projects. So giving you code to write that serves a real purpose so you can actually see Python in action in a meaningful way. And I really do believe Python is a great way to open yourself to new opportunities in cybersecurity, particularly if you're interested in moving into offensive security, into penetration testing, ethical hacking, even forensic investigation. And Python is my favorite language for cloud administration and automation as well. So be sure to let me know how you're progressing as you're learning. Drop me a line here in the video comments or over on LinkedIn in the chat. And be sure to like and subscribe out at Inside Cloud and Security here on YouTube so you never miss a video. And until next time, take care and stay safe.